All right, let's talk about probability theory. Although, at this point in the textbook, we're really talking about measure theory, because that's sort of where probability theory seems to start. So anyways, um, yeah, so we have a bunch of sigma fields or sigma algebras. It seems like, just looking at the textbook, there's some exercises where they say sigma field and some where they say sigma algebra, so I'll just not, I'll probably do what the textbook does and not be consistent in it, but I mean, we'll see what happens. This exercise, they say sigma field a lot, so let's just go with that. Okay, so we've got sigma fields. We've got a collection of sigma fields, and we want to show that um, their intersection is a sigma field. So, let, um, actually let F be this intersection. Or of course, I is this arbitrary indexing set. So let A be in the intersection over all I's of Fi. Um, I'll do this a lot where I leave out, like, the, instead of saying I in I, I'll just say I, and it'll be implied what the, where this index I belongs. Okay, so anyways, um, so one of the things that we need to prove is that this set is closed under complements. So A is in this intersection. So this means that A is in Fi for all I. And that's, of course, for all I in the indexing set I. And this holds because that's what it means to be an element of the intersection. So if A is an element of each Fi, then since each fi is a sigma field, then a complement is in fi for all i. And so if a complement is in every single fi, then it's in the intersection of the F's, fi's, which is the sigma field in question f. Next, suppose we have a countable subset of F. Then for each I and J, a J is an element of F I. And this holds for every I in the indexing set I, and this holds for every J between one and infinity. And this inclusion holds because each AJ is in the intersection of all the FIs, which means that it is in each particular FI. And so, if we take the union from J equals 1 to infinity of AJ, then this is going to be an element of FI. And since this holds for every single i, this implies that the union of the aj's is in the intersection of the fi's, which is f. And hence, f is a sigma field, because it is closed under complements and, and closed under com countable unions. All right, so that's the first part. And then the second part is to prove that um, if you're given a set omega and a collection of subsets of omega, then there is a smallest sigma field containing the set A. So let omega be a set, and this fancy A is a subset of the power set of omega. So it's a collection of subsets of omega. Let Fi be the collection of all subsets of the power set of A. No, this should be power set of omega, such that F is a sigma field, and F contains A, meaning every set in A is also a set in F.
So now, let f be the intersection over all i's. So I guess this is some arbitrary indexing set. So basically what we're doing is we're taking all of the sigma fields containing a and indexing them by some indexing set. And then we're letting f be their intersection. By part one, f is a sigma field. And we want to prove that f is the smallest sigma field containing a. So we've proven that it's a sigma field. We also have since a is contained in fi for all i in our indexing set, a must be contained in what? In the, their intersection, which is f. And then the last thing that we want to do is we want to prove that this is the smallest sigma field containing a. So it is a sigma field containing a. We want to prove it's the smallest one. So finally, if G is a, any sigma field containing A, then G must be equal to FJ for some J in the indexing set I. And that's because this um, the collection of the FIs is a collection of all sigma fields containing A. And so this sigma field F, since it's equal to the intersection of all of the FIs, it must be a subset of FJ. So So if we're given an arbitrary sigma field containing A, then it must contain this sigma field F. So thus, F, which we define as sigma of A, is the smallest sigma field containing A. And it is called the sigma field generated by A. And we will talk more about this. And yeah, so this proof isn't, there aren't too many tricks that we have to use. And in fact, I think I made this longer than I needed to. It's sort of um, clear by construction that this F that we construct as, the, as this intersection, it's obviously going to be contained in any of the things that you're intersecting. So I guess it's not really necessary to introduce this um, this sigma field G and use this argument to prove that um, F is in fact the smallest sigma field containing A. Um, but anyways, I think this proof was simple enough that they figured they would put it as an exercise rather than as a theorem. Um, but yeah, this is an important uh, concept and it will be talked about more in the text. And yeah, that finishes this exercise.